In this episode, Kenan and I dream about how our gardens are going to one day look. And not just landscaping around Slinky's cage, but how Kenan is going to landscape his entire two and a half acres. And I have an old catfish pond that I'm going to convert into a Mediterranean garden. I am then going to travel to Iguana Land to see spiny-tailed iguanas and the endangered Burmese star tortoise. And I look at these giant palm trees yeah. and I fall in love with. And I go, I go, when did you plant this? And they go, they go like 30 years ago. But I'm like, man, okay, I got to get going. Yeah. I mean, now it's almost too late because I'm 58, 30 years, I'm 88. Unless you got a lot of money, then you can buy mature ones. But it's, um, I'm the same way. I, I need to start planting ASAP, man. Um, I just turned 50 this year, so I'm going to want to make sure I can see these this this garden in full bloom i suppose you know so kenan this is like twice the size of when greg was here i know it's insane um i actually left for 10 days i came back and it just spread amazingly the fact that we fertilized it nicely is important uh if you notice so i had turtles in here and they were eating they ate all my lilies but if you notice do you see i have actual lilies from before look at this right yeah. down there little lilies that actually were dormant uh, but weren't able to grow because the turtles kept uh, grazing on them. So I'm going to get in there and throw some fertilizer on those just to see if we can even get more of them to pop up. Can I, you, can I bring a bigger pot? Can we re see that that Amazon is a, needs a bigger... Needs a bigger pot? Yeah. 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 Sure. Okay. Let's do it. Um, I, I'll, I didn't know that. So in, in which case, you know, I can get a bigger pot myself or transplant it. And that would look just amazing, that Amazon. Because we can get those bigger, can't we? Oh, bigger? Yeah. You can get them 20 feet. Get out of here. Yes. What? You can get a pad like this. No way. Yes. Oh, I got to do that for sure. Yeah, that's important. So I, I'll definitely get on that, that situation. But yeah, it's just gone well. All right. Uh, it is a warm day here, Tom. I think it's like 95 degrees. But let's go around back. I want to show you where... You know what we've been discussing i mean uh, i really want to fill in the back portion of the property as far as uh making it my jungle man so i'm excited that you're able to help out with this and while we're back there you can have a look at how things have been progressing with slinkies uh it's all growing in there i gotta fight some weeds but otherwise it's pretty good i also want to do something with this area once i get the machinery i'm gonna clean this up and uh pull out some of these fake stones and then make you know, some kind of uh, garden. I want to put rocks, big boulders here, and kind of retain the soil, kind of give it a, a yeah, would you, design. Would you pull the fake stones up here and then? Yeah, well, I wouldn't pull the fake stones. I'd get rid of them or bury them, and then um, just have large natural boulders here, uh, and then possibly do a tunnel so the tortoises can kind of wander back and forth through here, which I think would be pretty cool. I like uh, your side cats. My eyes go right to the three side yeah, cats. Yeah, they're right here. You, um, you want to go back to uh, the Dales this summer? Oh, I'd love to. I, I definitely want to get. We got to get. Down. So we just got to pull this out. Pull, pull this out. You, you know, pull the rocks out and do side cats all around. Okay. Cool. We can do that. That'll be fun. It's easy. Just pull it out and add some more fill, and then we'll do big side cats. So when you're walking through, you have all that. Um, this is the area that I think. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, you tell me. I think there's going to be a pond here. I've got to weed whack and do some things, but that's that looks like it's growing nicely over here. These look these like they're doing great. Weed. Yeah, these are doing well. So I'm happy about that. Um, I don't know what else I could do to just cut down on some of that dollar grass that's growing up here. I oh, mean, that, that's easy enough to pull. It's, yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's just a lot of... I guess I might want to get a tortoise to eat it. Unfortunately, the tortoise would probably eat the alocasia also. But um, all right, I'll just get in here and start weeding. But look at this bat. banana's looking good, huh? That is. This that one's is. still good. This was the one that was injured a little bit. It seems like it's coming back, which is nice. Uh, that one is definitely getting bigger, but we'll go ahead. Oh, this is this, considering what it looked like before. I Absolutely. It's really cool. Um, all right, so moving over here is what I wanted to do. I want to clean all this. I got to get the machine to move everything. We're going to move this stone. I figured... Just kind of getting soil in here, creating some topography. I'm going to move all those blocks. But some nice topography back here, because if you notice, this gets wet back here. So 
I may actually, um, you know, kind of fill things in, but I, I planted some bamboo. I actually transplanted, don't mind the dogs, it's a big old Great Dane right there. Um, but anyhow, yeah, I'm trying to actually, what I want to do is kind of block the visual barrier so the dogs don't keep bothering me. But I want to make this dense, dense jungle. Some, some more plants over here. Um, just kind of create, you know, we have a nice kind of blank slate in this area, don't you think? Yes, yeah, so so if you, we get the compost, we can just do the compost six feet wide. And maybe a foot tall okay and just put some here and All you right. can put a strip here and you could do a path yeah in the middle like yeah, you definitely. want to do do a nice path through it um maybe you could do a little serpentine path that's what i was wondering i like to do something like a little bit more to give you the illusion that the place is much bigger and uh give you a sense of adventure you're going on a, a little adventure through it here's where i put our uh these allocation okay this is a nice wet area um yeah i can't do that I can't stand dogs. I don't have dogs. I have alligators. Um, but anyway. This is Diego. This is a Mexican spiny tail iguana, Tinosaura pectinata. And this is the banana locality with this beautiful orange and yellow in his stripes. Uh, these guys are native to western Mexico and they are from uh, warm, dry, temperate forests. So they're pretty good climbers and they'll spend a good amount of time up in trees. They're omnivores, so they will eat bugs as well as fruits and leaves and flowers. This is as big as he is going to get. He's about six years old, and he was hatched right here to Guanaland. He is one of our ambassador animals, so he's used to being touched and held. You can see he wants to climb up on my shoulder. He's used to coming out and meeting people. And he does a lot of our off-site programming with us too. He'll come on outreaches with me, where we go out into our community to help educate about these beautiful animals. And in human care, uh, the Mexican spiny tail iguana is expected to live about 15 to 20 years. Like I said, he's about five or six, so he is doing great. And we've got to have him here with us at Iguana Land for a very long time still. So these are Burmese star tortoises, Geochiloni platinota. Uh, this is a species native to Myanmar. Uh, this one is just about full grown. She's as big as she's going to get. So this is a relatively small tortoise. This is a critically endangered species. Up until very recently, they were considered to be extinct in the wild. Uh, they were very heavily threatened from poaching due to both consumption for meat and use in the pet trade. And they were almost completely removed from our planet by the early 2000s. They were considered extinct in the wild. And there were only a handful in human care. Luckily, the government in Myanmar has worked very hard with these tortoises. There's a lot of captive breeding programs that have been very successful, and their populations are considered currently to be increasing. And they have had some successful reintroduction into protected park lands in Myanmar. They're still very heavily guarded and they've got a long way to go. Um, and the coolest thing about our group here, we have seven of these amazing animals. And this year, 2024, for the first time, Iguanaland was able to reproduce this species. So we had uh, captive bred hatchlings produced right here at Iguanaland this year, and we're very proud of that. Hi, little bud, there you are. You know what I love? I love turtles. <laughs> so you can help me some someday I may want a turtle. I thought you wanted a ledger. Now you want me to turtle. Well, listen, you're, listen, you're... I think I think the turtles are very personable. I have- and they're not dangerous. You know, like lizard could bite you. And lizard, mm. snake, they're totally different. Okay, so this here is the Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake, the largest rattlesnake species in the entire world, native to right here, Florida. Of course, you have to hear that rattle there. That rattle uh, is not meant to, of course, uh, it doesn't mean that it wants to hurt you. It means it wants you to get away. It's scary. If you think about it, if a rattlesnake makes that sound towards the rabbit, the rabbit's gonna get away. They're gonna lose their meal. The only rattle like that, when they want you to go away, when they're bothered by you, which with this snake is exactly what's going on, I just took it out of its home and he's just letting me know, hey, back up, leave me alone. I don't wanna deal with you. And that's why we use these hooks here. He's not aggressive or anything, but he does try and bite because he is scared that I might hurt him. With time, a lot of times they even stop rattling and that's when their rattles get really, really huge. Um, 
whenever they rattle a lot, that rattle sometimes falls off. But with this guy here, he's still very defensive, very like, hey, stay away from me. I want nothing to do with you. So we use these hooks here to make it safer for us and for the animal as well, honestly. Of course, that venomous snake, if this thing was to bite you, we would have to get to the hospital immediately. And you guys drove here. You guys saw how much driving there is with the nearest hospital, right? It's gonna be a while. So of course, we try to be as safe as possible with the hooks. Of course, we're all professionals. We work with these animals here. We find them in the wild as well, take photos, and that's completely fine. I just don't recommend it for uh, just anybody to do it. It's an animal that, of course, you have to work with before even trying to handle or see how they behave. Right now, I'm at a good distance from this animal. If I was somebody else, I didn't know. It might be one step closer. And this animal would, of course, get way too close to me and it would be very, very dangerous. Well, maybe the next snake will be a little less dangerous. Is a gaboon viper and a rhinoceros viper completely different animals? Or they yeah, they're completely different animals. They're in the same genus, so they're both zitis, along with like pup adders, some mountain adders, but they're similar enough to where you could produce a hybrid with them called a gabina, which is a really, really cool looking snake. So their head is shaped and patterned to look just like a leaf, so that they can sit in the ambush and nothing will see them. Yeah, very heavy bodied snake. He will get a lot longer too, but but that girth is what's just so impressive with this species. Yeah, it's like they don't even fit in a standard hook really. This is literally my favorite venomous snake. Just the coloration and the pattern. If this is laying like on dead leaves, yeah, like people you, think he's not even in there when they walk. Yeah, by. yeah, you would not see this thing in the wild if it's laying right next to you. Those have the longest fangs of any venomous snake. So something you really, really don't want to get bit by, of course. Yeah, when they're like walking a rat down their throat with their fangs, it's insane to see how big their fangs are. And again, that pattern is just the best of any snake, in my opinion, at least. Oh, is this the eastern pine snake or bull snake? Northern pine snake. Northern, Northern pine, pine snake. snake. Very nice. So we remember the snake, honey? This is my first snake. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this was the first snake I've ever owned. And remember you were going to the bathroom one night? And it was out? It was good. Ah! <laughs> Not an encounter you want going to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, you know what I had? What? I had a big, beautiful orange. It was on tree ball. Oh, very oh, nice. Awesome. I don't Bye. know. I don't, I, I don't remember why snakes would escape from me. But, but anyway, it went in the closet, you know, because of tree fall, right? It went up in the closet. Nice. And Deborah, you didn't find it. But, but I, it was like right there. It was like right it was like, yo, in the closet. Yeah, I had that happen one time with a Woma python. And uh, I was keeping it at my girlfriend's house at the time. And I remember she told me she walked into like the spare room where I was keeping the snake. And it was above the door and struck down at her when she walked inside. <laughs> That is a super, that is super cool. Now back to Holt Nurseries, where I have some dried up catfish ponds that I'm gonna convert to Mediterranean gardens. This is the last part of Holt Nurseries that has not been planted either with gardens or greenhouses. This is probably an acre and a half behind me. It's the last place. And we did have it all ponds at one time, but I wanna turn it into gardens. I don't know if I'm gonna get there this year or not. You know, everything in Florida is very flat, so I think it's really cool how I can have steps going down here and you can look to the left and the right. Maybe I could someday have a waterfall. I'm about ready to go to the landscape show. Maybe they'll have some deals on plants. I think we built this in the year like 2019. So this is five years ago. Everything here was filled with water. We stocked everything with catfish. Someone gave me a great deal for the catfish. We, we stocked this with maybe 1,000 channel cat. It was a lot of fun. It never was filled to the top. It was maybe we had this about five feet deep. I think my idea is you could have paths walking through here. And I'm thinking not a tropical garden. Everything I've done to this point has been tropical gardens. But I'm thinking maybe Mediterranean, I'm thinking banana bushes and magnolias and maybe some Washingtonia palms or some Mediterranean fan palms. I, I think this is a colder spot in my nursery. I think definitely it gets a little colder here. 
I'm 250 feet from the camera. So this area here is about 250 feet by about 150 feet. And then behind me is a 100 foot by 100 foot pond or the 90 foot by 90 foot pond we're about to build. So like I said, this whole section here is about an acre and a half. Not sure how much I'm gonna plant out in 2024. We'll see how the year goes. We will see you next week and don't forget to like and subscribe.